Happy Sabbath again, brothers and sisters. And as we always like to start the Sabbath off, we're going to kick it off with the reading of the law. So let us turn our books to Exodus chapter 20. And we're going to pick it up at verse 1. And when you get there, my brother, <clears throat> go right ahead. And God spake all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God, which I brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image, or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. And showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. For the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work. Thou nor thy son nor thy daughter. Thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Thou shalt not cover thy neighbor's house. Thou shalt not cover thy neighbor's wife, nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is thy neighbor's. Praise the Lord, brothers and sisters. Now let us turn our books to Ecclesiastes chapter 12. <coughs> we're going to pick it up at verse 13. Ecclesiastes chapter 12, we're going to pick it up at verse 13. 13 and 14, my brother. And when you get there, go right ahead. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. For God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. Amen. Now, brothers and sisters, if you would, turn your books to Revelation chapter 22, and we're going to pick it up at verse 14, 14 and 15 when we get there, my brother. Go right ahead. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city. For without are dogs and sorcerers and whoremongers and murderers and idolaters and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. Praise the Lord, brothers and sisters. And as a reminder, keep that law in your head, brothers and sisters. Every day of the week, let it keep you. Let it lead and guide you. Let that law even strengthen you. And more importantly, let it keep you out of trouble. Amen, brothers and sisters. And with that being said, brothers and sisters, we're going to go ahead and get into this Sabbath lesson. And before we start this lesson off, you know, there's a common saying that I'm hearing so much now. When they're just talking to people, checking on people, things of that nature. They say, everybody going through something. How many times you done heard that lately? Anybody you talk to, hey, you got a problem, they got a problem. Everybody going through something. Everybody is. But, brothers and sisters, the question behind that is, how are we handling it, though? How are we truly handling going through something? Because we all going through it, but how do you conduct yourself as you going through it? It's, some, it's a big word we're going to look at. I had them put the definition up because that's the title right there, forbearance. So we're going to look at that today, brothers and sisters. I asked that brother to go ahead and put that definition up, because before we get into the scriptures, I just want us to look at some things that we truly need to work on since we're going through something. We need to learn about our self-control, our patience, our restraint, and our tolerance. Because a lot of times when we say we're going through something, we're going through life, and we're going, we going, we going through things with people. I know the books say, hey, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but hey, a lot of times it's flesh and blood that's in your face, ain't it? I'm going to say it for what it is. A lot of times you lose sight of what the scriptures say because it's somebody in your face. It's a situation you're dealing with. It's a problem, whether it be work, home, whatever. 
It's something in your face that you got to deal with. The Lord had things in his face he had to deal with. And that's why we're going to learn the importance of this word right here. I know when I came in, brother said, man, what's that mean? I said, you're going to learn today. Because, brother, so we got to learn to forbear some things. And I hope with this lesson, we learn how to tolerate things a lot better than we do. Because, like I said, we all going through something. And unless you know how to handle it, you still ain't passed the test. Just realizing that we're going through things, whether it be with people, with your jobs, with your income, whatever, regardless of what it is, you've got to know how to have some self-control when you're dealing with it. So let's deal with this thing today, brothers and sisters. Again, the title is Forbearance. And I want to pick this up in Ephesians, the fourth chapter. We're going to Ephesians, the fourth chapter, and we're going to pick it up at verse 1. Because I'm going to tell you something, and I'm going to put myself on blast with this whole lesson so you all are exempt. All of y'all. <laughs> Hey, this is, this is something your brother got to learn. Hey, because you can put up with something for so long, can't you? And then you'll give yourself an expiration date. You would tell, you know what, I'm sick of this. How many of y'all have said that before? How many of y'all have said I'm tired? How many of y'all have said enough is enough? And then after you say them things, what well, we'll mess up at, but here's what we mess up at. When we say these things, we'll go act on it. Imagine if the Lord, with everything that he went through, he said, no, you know what? I ain't doing it. When none of us be in this room right now. Just imagine that. So we got to learn some control, brothers and sisters. We're going to pick this up in Ephesians 4, pick it up at verse 1. Ephesians 4, and we're going to pick it up at verse 1. And when you get there, my brother, it's going to be a hard pill for us to swallow. Start feeding us. I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, uh -huh. beseech you that ye walk worthy of the vocation wherewith ye are called. Right. With all lowliness and meekness. And see, this is the thing, brothers and sisters. All of us are in this building with a goal to become true servants of God, to become the elect of God. There's an order behind doing that. Hey, it said with all lowliness and meekness. Hey, we even got to be prisoners of this thing. Being, being a servant of the Lord means you don't get to operate the way you want to. Go ahead, brother. With all lowliness and meekness, with long suffering. With long suffering, go ahead. Forbearing one another in love. See, and that's the thing, that key thing right there. It said forbearing one another with love. Put that definition up again for me, brother Hammer. It said forbearing one another with love. It said one another, that's us. We ain't talking about spirits. We talking about me and you now. We talking about the fact that we got to have patience with one another. We talking about the fact that we got to have self-control, restraint with one another. Because a lot of times when you say you tired, you talking about somebody. Somebody made you tired. Somebody ticked you off. Somebody made you say enough is enough. We going to real talk it today. And that's what we got to learn, brothers and sisters, because we fall short when enough is enough with us. We like we can't forbear. And the, and the book say forbearing one another in love, did it not? Yes, sir. Go ahead, brother. Endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit. Do y'all know what the word endeavoring means? Trying hard. That means you are giving your all to have self-control. You're giving your all to have patience with folks. You're giving your all to have restraint because you want to... Ooh, sometimes you just want to go there, don't you? Sometimes you feel like you, it, it fixes the situation when you just go there, and it don't. That control do, that restraint do, and we lose sight of that. Let's keep going, brother. Where you at? Endeavoring to keep the unity of the spirit and the bond of peace. Hey, you're supposed to give it your all to keep the bond of peace going. And this is what we got to do amongst ourselves. See, we lose sight of that. Hey, like the book say, we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Hey, and you would look at the person in front of you like they are straight up devil. But you're supposed to have a little peace with them. You're supposed to have a little patience with them. You're supposed to have some long suffering. You ain't struggling with them. But we have put ourselves in that. Why? Because we ain't got no patience and no self-control, brothers and sisters. Let's look at something. Let's go to Hebrews, the second chapter. 
Then look at how the Lord handles situations. And ask yourself, is that how I'm, is that how I handle stuff? Hebrews 2, and we're going to pick it up at verse 9 when we get there. Hebrews 2, and we're going to pick it up at verse 9. A lot of times when we lose sight of our brothers and sisters, and when the Lord came in the flesh, he was doing that for the purpose of showing us how to walk in the flesh. Not only did he die for the sins of the world, but he gave you access to life, and he showed you how to get it. We got to walk therein. Jesus, it ain't just Jesus just did the work and now you can stay a sinner, keep doing your own thing. You got to walk the same way he did if you want the same gifts he got. So Hebrews 2, and let's pick it up at verse 9. Hebrews 2 and verse 9. What does it read, my brother? But we see Jesus, who was made a little lower than the angels. Just as us. Yeah. Go ahead. For the suffering of death. Uh-huh. Crowned with glory and honor, that he, by the grace of God, should taste death for every man. Right, and we see where the Lord is now. He on the right hand of the Father, giving instructions. Sit thou at my right hand till I make thy enemies thy footstool. He's straight now. He ain't got to go through what we going through. But look at how he got there. What the next verse say, brother? For it became him for whom are all things, and by whom are all things, and bringing many sons unto glory, to make the captain of their salvation perfect through what? Suffering. Through suffering. The Lord was made perfect through suffering, brothers and sisters. Turn my mic up a little bit, bro. And I'm going to remind y'all of something. You know what's going to make you perfect? You're going to have to suffer some things, too. I want you to look at your life on this perspective. What if everything that you say you're sick of is a part of your suffering to get eternal life? What if what you're going, up, going through at home is just you getting there? What if whatever you're going through with your job is just the Lord getting you there and putting you right where you need to be so you can suffer to get close to him? That's exactly what it is. But we don't look at it like that all the time. Why? Because we get sick of it. We get tired of it. I can't do this no more. And what we do, we walk away from the plan of salvation. Not even looking at it because we're getting in our feelings. Where we at, Rashad? We, just finished, we finished that? Let's go to Matthew 16. And it say, hey, the captain of our salvation was made perfect through suffering, right? Who did he suffer with? Matthew 16. Because I want you to remember something, brothers and sisters. A servant is not above his master. The Lord said it's enough if the servant be as his master, which means whatever he went through, Hey, to validate you, you got to go through the same thing. Same cup. But Matthew 16, and we're going to pick it up at verse 21. Matthew 16, and we're going to pick it up at verse 21. And when you get there, my brother, keep feeding us. From that time forth began Jesus to show unto his disciples how that he must go unto Jerusalem. Uh-huh, and hey, he's telling his disciples some things. He's telling them how his walk of life is going to be. Now he's about to tell them about his suffering. How is he going to suffer, brother? Keep reading. And suffer many things of the elders. Uh-huh. Go ahead. Of the elders and chief priests and scribes. Hold on. These are people. Yes. He's telling his disciples how he's going to suffer things. Turn my mic up. From people. People. Elders. Chief priests. These were people. Hey, they, it, hey, they were all going to the synagogue on a Sabbath day together. But these are the same people that put them through it. Go ahead, brother. And be killed and be raised again the third day. Hey, he ran all this down to his disciples. Hey, I got to suffer things from people. What Peter say? Go ahead, brother. Then Peter took him and began to rebuke him, saying, Be it far from thee, Lord. This shall not be unto uh, thee. Uh-huh. Hey, Peter, no, this ain't going to be. People ain't going to put you through that. People ain't going to do that to you. Go ahead. 23, but he turned and said unto Peter, get thee behind me, Satan. Uh -huh. Thou art an offense unto me, for thou savorest not the things that be of God, but those that be of men. So in a nutshell, he checked Peter, get thee behind me, Satan. You ain't talking right. The things that I go through, hey, they written, and these are the things of God. You talking man. 
Man is all kumbaya and everybody getting along. Lord, like, no, you're going to suffer some things. You're going to be reproached. You're going to be afflicted. You're going to be oppressed for this. This is what you got to go through. This is what we all got to go through, brothers and sisters. Keep in mind, the servant ain't above the master. Where we at? We just finished. We finished that. Now let's go to Isaiah 53. Because the Lord suffered these things of the chief priests, the elders, and everybody. But how did he handle it? Was he swinging on everybody? Was he cutting up? How did he handle this? He knew how the people was going to come at him. Sometimes you know how people are going to come at you. But how do you handle it? Isaiah 53, we're going to pick it up at verse 5. Isaiah 53, and we're going to pick it up at verse 5. When you get there, brother, go right ahead. But he was wounded for our transgressions. Just so we know who it is. Go ahead. He was bruised for our iniquity. Yes, sir. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. Uh-huh. And with his stripes, we are healed. Uh-huh. Just learning something on the way to learn something for the new people that's in there. This talking Jesus right here, way back in the Old Testament. That's all the prophets taught was Jesus. Hey, but it said he was bruised for our transgressions, right? He went through all this. Now, bag it up for me, brother. Bag it up for me. Well, we should have did another sound check. Bag it up for me and read verse 3. He is despised and rejected of men. He was what? Despised. This is your God, brothers and sisters. Pay attention. He was despised. He was rejected of men. He was not a likable guy. Go ahead. A man of sorrows. He, was, he was a man of sorrows. He was hurt. Hey, the book says, son of man didn't have a place to lay his head. Go ahead. And acquainted with grief. He was acquainted with grief. Do you know what that is? He was sad. He was depressed. Go ahead, brother. And we hid as it were our faces from him. Hey, and the people didn't want to have nothing to do with him. Unless he was feeding them or performing miracles, hey, they wasn't rolling with him. It said at one time a whole bunch of disciples just walked off from him. Couldn't understand what he was saying to him. But go ahead, brother. He was despised, and we esteemed him not. Hey, he was despised, and nobody lifted him up. Pay attention to this, because life's going to get like this for you one way or another at one time. A lot of us can relate to this already. When you done felt alone, nobody cared about you, nobody comforted you, nobody gave you no oil. What did you do? Did you lose your mind? Did you cut up? Ask yourself these questions. Skip down for me, brother, and read verse 7, and what does it read? He was oppressed, and he was afflicted. He was oppressed and afflicted. He went through it. We even read where he just went through it with, with the people. Go ahead. Yet he opened not his mouth. What? He opened not his mouth. Put that definition back up for me, Hammer. He opened, he was oppressed. He was afflicted. Hey, and he had self-control, brothers and sisters. He had restraint. How many times people putting you through something? How many times life has got you rocked so much that you got to say something? You got to scream. You got to do nothing. What did the Lord do? And we ain't been through what he went through. And he kept his mouth closed. How many of y'all got a gang of folks outside right now waiting to kill you for this? None of you. I can comfortably say that to you. None of you. He did this. He knew his enemies. He knew how they felt about him. He knew how everybody was treating him, and he kept his mouth closed. Go ahead, brother. Mid seven. He has brought us a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before her shearers is dumb, so he opened not his mouth. Hey, hey, they put him, hey, had him walk the death line, and he still kept his mouth closed. Keep reading. Eight. He was taken from prison and from judgment. And who shall declare his generation? For he was cut off out of the land of the living. Uh-huh. For the transgression of my people was he stricken. Hey, he was beat for our wrongs. How many of us have the ability to withstand going through something for somebody else wrong? Don't nobody want to go through that. We quick to say, boy, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Key words, your own. But the Lord took this for us with a closed mouth. Didn't cuss not a one of us out. Took it. Go ahead, brother. And he made his grave with the wicked. Uh-huh. And with the rich in his depth. 
because he had done no violence, neither was any deceit in his mouth. Boy, ain't it hard for you to be right and take wrong? That's a hard pill to swallow, boy. Nothing will enrage you more than being right but being looked at wrong. But look how the Lord dealt with it, though. He knew he was right. He was a son of, he was a son of God, y'all. Imagine, hey, imagine the boasting and the pride you have on you if you was in his shoes. Do you not know who you talking to? But Jesus didn't do him like that. He took it all for what it was and kept his mouth closed. That's real self-control, brothers and sisters. Because we, we set ourselves with limitations. We gave on ourselves breaking points. We say it one more time. If it happen again, if they do this, if they say one more thing, you give yourself a breaking point. Lord just kept it moving. Lord forbear it, brothers and sisters. Hey, that's real talk, Joe. We do that. You will say it right in your head. Don't realize what you just did to yourself. I tell you what, if you say one more thing, you are already enraged now. Your mind ain't even with the Lord no more. It's too much, even too much contention in you right now. That ain't a hey, the wrath of man that does not work the righteousness of God, brother. I don't care how you look at it. Cause how much book you know. If you ain't handling your mind right with it, you ain't right. Hands down. Let's go to Romans, the third chapter. <clears throat> Lord handles all that with a closed mouth. Boy, y'all would hear me. If you in Nashville, you're going to hear me in Memphis. Romans, the third chapter, we're going to pick it up at verse 25. Romans, the third chapter, and we're going to pick it up at verse 25. Because the script say it pleased the Lord to bruise him, too. But let's look at this thing. Let's look at what he did when he went through all this and he kept his mouth closed. He kept himself under control. Romans, the third chapter, we're going to pick it up at 25. What does it read, my brother? Whom God hath set forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood, to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are past. Yes, sir. Through the forbearance of God. Through the forbearance of God, brothers and sisters. What did he show us? That, what did he teach us? Everything the Lord went through was a teaching move for you. He taught you self-control. He taught you restraint. He taught you patience. You saw it with him in the worst situation ever. That's the forbearance of God, brothers and sisters. But go ahead. 26. To declare, I say, at this time, his righteousness. And that's what it was. We have nothing wicked to say about somebody that takes the wrong that came to them. Well, yeah, they was wrong for what they did, but you ain't got no buts with Jesus. He handled it all right. That's what we got to learn to do. Sometimes a person will be wrong, but you just throw something in there, now you wrong. We didn't add evil to evil. We got to understand how we need to operate, brothers and sisters. Go ahead, bro. That he might be just and the justifier of him which believeth in Jesus. Yes, sir. He not only is the just one, he's the justifier. So the ones that move the way he moved, he can validate them. That's what you need. You need however... The Lord got you suffering. You need to move the way he moved with it so he can justify you, so he can validate you, so he can say, look, Father, what my son is doing, what my daughter is doing. She handling it like me. He handling it like me. How else are you going to get his attention? What did the book say? Let the mind that is in Christ be in you. So we have to handle life the way he did. Don't lean on your own understanding, brothers and sisters. That's what we mess up every time. Go ahead, brother. We done with that? Now let's go to Hebrews, the 12th chapter. Hebrews 12, we're going to pick it up at verse 2. Hebrews 12, and we're going to pick it up at verse 2. And when you get there, my brother, go right ahead. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Yes, sir. Who, for the joy that was set before him, endured the cross. Catch, did you catch that? See, everybody said they're trying to get into the kingdom, but are you trying to get into the kingdom? Ask yourself that question. 
Because he said, hey, he with joy that was set before him endured the cross. Because he knew it was on the end of the finish line. He, however I got to get there, he took it. We got to have this mindset, brothers and sisters. Sometimes life is hard as you know what. But we as servants of God are supposed to know the end of the road. You're supposed to say, okay, I got to walk in this law. I got to do this. I got, it said the book say those that endure to the end going to be saved. Endure. Endure don't sound easy to me. It don't sound like cruise control or none of that. It sounds real bumpy and hard to me. And that's what it's going to be for every last one of us, brothers and sisters. You're going to have to endure something. Go ahead, brother. Me too. Despising the shame and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Uh-huh. For consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself. Hey, you've got to think about that. That is so, read that again. For consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself. Consider what he went through. The people that was coming at him and attacking him were wrong, y'all. They were sinners. But they made him the one that was wrong. Stoned him for calling himself the son of God. They made him the wrong one. And imagine how he dealt with that. He, hey, they was wrong. They contradicted themselves. They stood like they were servants of God and dogged God out. And he took that? Look what we do when we know somebody wrong. Do you take it? Question we got to ask ourselves. The book said, hey, why don't you take wrong? Why don't you suffer and be defrauded? But we got to get that one up on you. You're not going to be wrong and make me, you're not going to be crazy and have me crazy with you. That's what we say. No, you're not going to take me there. No, you're going to hear me because I know you're wrong. Now, y'all want to know? I say that. I'm like, no, I know you're wrong. Hey, the Lord had all the knowledge and wisdom, brothers and sisters, and he still took this from them? He still tolerated this? Yeah. Go ahead, brother. Lest ye be wearied and faint in your mind. And that's what happened. When wrong come at you, sometimes you can't take it no more. I'm tired of being picked on. I'm tired of this. I'm tired of trying to be a servant. Have you ever said I'm tired of being a servant of the Lord? Just because you want to go somewhere else with a person? Some of y'all can't understand that. <laughs> Jay can. <laughs> Because, brothers and sisters, you will get weary of this thing if you don't keep your mind on God. That's real talk. You will get so familiar with your own thoughts, your own ideas, your own way of handling this stuff, you won't operate the way Christ do. And that's why he told you, consider him. Consider how he handled folks. Consider what he did when they was talking about him, beating on him, oppressing him, afflicting him. Because people did this to him. And if you don't think like this, you're going to make the wrong decisions every time. I'm telling you what I know. You can't tell me I'm wrong on this one. I'm telling you what I know. You try to lean on your own understanding, you will fall short every time. Where we at, bro? Verse 4. Go ahead. You have not yet resisted unto blood, striving against hey, sin. And we, ain't, we haven't yet. Ain't nobody trying to kill you for this yet. But imagine when we get there. If we ain't got no control, if we ain't got no patience, if we ain't got no restraint now, hey, imagine what you would do. You might take the mark or anything. So this self-control, brothers and sisters, this forbearance, we got to learn this now. Because it's not going to get easier as the Lord gets closer. It's going to get harder and harder and harder. The problems you got now, they only going to get turned up. The people that afflict you, the people that come up against you, there's more coming. And if you ain't got a mindset to deal with it now, you ain't going to have one when it's time. Where we at, bro? We done, we done with that? Let's go to Acts 13. Y'all eating okay, brothers and sisters? Yeah. Janet Jackson had a song out back in the day. Control. That's <laughs> all you can take to yourself sometimes. Control. 
Acts 13, brothers and sisters, we're going to pick it up at verse 16. Acts 13, and we're going to pick it up at verse 16. Good boy, the Lord had to tolerate some stuff, brothers and sisters. He truly did. And not just in the flesh. He had to tolerate some things, hey, even when he was dealing with our forefathers in the wilderness. But Acts 13, let's pick it up at verse 16. And when you get there, my brother, go right ahead. Then Paul stood up and beckoning with his hand said, Men of Israel, and ye that fear God, give audience. Uh, I like how Paul said, Men of Israel and those that fear the Lord. Hey, if you fear the Lord and you Israel, you listening. Go ahead. The God of this people of Israel chose our fathers uh -huh. and exalted the people when they dwelt as strangers in the land of Egypt. Yes, sir. And with an high arm brought he them out of it. Right. These are the things the Lord did for our forefathers, did for the children of Israel when they was in Egypt. But go ahead, brother. What did that next verse say? And about the time of 40 years suffered, suffered he their manners in the wilderness. And after the span of 40 years, it said he suffered he their manners in the wilderness. What does that mean, he suffered their manners? He put up with some stuff with them. He took some crap from them. Let's look at it. And thank you for that, brother. That's exactly what it was. The Lord put up with some stuff, y'all. Hey, and let's look at a good example of that. Let's go to Exodus chapter 32. Because like I said, if the Lord didn't have no self-control, boy, wouldn't be no children of Israel. I don't know who the Lord chosen would be, but I know who they would not be. Exodus 32, we're going to pick this up at verse 9. Exodus 32, and we're going to pick it up at verse 9. The Lord had Moses come up to the mount, gave him instructions of laws to teach the people, and in the mix of that, Israel do what Israel did. Cut up. Cut up. 32 and 9, go ahead, brother. And the Lord said unto Moses, I have seen this people, and behold, it is a stiff-necked people. Uh, the Lord talking about his firstborn, y'all. He said, I done seen them, and they stiff-necked. They hard-headed. Go ahead. Ten. Now, therefore, let me alone, that my wrath may wax hot against them. Hey, leave me alone. Hey, the Lord, I almost about to lose it right here, brothers and sisters. He said, leave me alone. Hey, he didn't even want nobody to sway him out of this. Hey, you done been like that before. You done been mad at somebody, uh-uh, don't talk to me right now, I'm on one. I don't want to talk. Well, what you want to do? I want to, I want to. <laughs> That's all you want right now. All you want right now is to fight or something. But I don't want you to talk me out of it. The Lord had got just to that point. But we are serious, stiff-necked people to make an eternal God get to this level that we familiar with. Boy, that's something. Go ahead, brother. And my wrath may wax hot against them. Uh-huh. And that I may consume them. And I will make of thee a great nation. Hey, the Lord was so hot here. Hey, he had planned the whole thing out. I'm going to consume them and make a nation out of you. Leave me alone. Don't talk me out of it. Boy, praise the Lord for Moses on this one. Keep reading, brother. And Moses besought the Lord his God and said, Lord, why doth thy wrath wax hot against thy people? Uh-huh which thou hast brought forth out of the land of Egypt with great power and with a mighty hand. Uh-huh, go ahead, brother. Wherefore should the Egyptians speak and say, for mischief did he bring them out to slay them in the mountains and to consume them from the face of the earth. Yes, sir. Turn from thy fierce wrath and repent of this evil against thy people. Hey, Moses had to talk the Lord out of this, brothers and sisters. Praise hey, God. he had to drop some stuff that made sense to the Lord. Praise God. Hey, them Egyptians going to talk about you. They're going to talk about you. They're going to say you did this for mischief. Go ahead, brother. Remember Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, thy servants. Hey, he had to bring the, hey, we made the Lord so hot that Moses had to remind the Lord of what he said. Boy, if Israel won't do it to you, this will let you know Israel will do this to you. If you see they did it to God, what make us exempt? We're going to do that to each other. Go ahead, bro. Thy servants, to whom thou swearest by thine own self. Yes, sir. And said to hey, them. Hey, he has to remind the Lord of what you said. You swear at this. Go ahead. I will multiply your seed as the stars of heaven. And all this land that I have spoken of will I give unto your seed. And they shall inherit it forever. Forever. And what did the Lord do? 14. 
And the Lord repented of the evil which he thought to do unto his people. Hey, that turned him around. Hey, he got some self-control then. Praise God. Hey, but, but you know the beauty of that, brothers and sisters? The only thing that calmed God down was the word of God. Right, right. I want you to remember that too. Because he was about to get on one, like we say in Memphis. Oh, you about to be on one. He was going to get turned all the way up. And the only thing that calmed him down was the word of God. Hey, you are still here because of that conversation. Praise the Lord for that, brothers and sisters. Praise that's real God. talk. But that's something we got to learn. Hey, sometimes you got to remember the promises God left for us if we stay right. Because Israel going to take you there. If they took their God, if they took their maker there, <laughs> and we all just kids amongst each other, know what we going to do. We going to cut up. Something to definitely look at. Where we at, Rashad? Let's go to Romans 9. Let's go back to the book of Romans. You know, don't nobody in history have a true story of angering gods like we do? <laughs> you know, they got all this Greek stuff and all these TV shows. Oh, you have angered the gods and all this stuff. No, nah, we angered God for real. <laughs> It's recorded. <laughs> this is real talk. This ain't no Greek stuff or nothing. Real talk, Israel has angered the true and living God. <laughs> for real, for real. <laughs> On multiple occasions. <laughs> it's in history. <laughs> Romans 9, and we're going to pick it up at verse 22. Romans 9 and verse 22. When you get there, my brother, go right ahead. What if God... Wanting to show his wrath and to make his power known, endured with much long suffering the vessels of wrath fitted to destruction. Hey, and he did with much long suffering. Hey, deal with them that would, hey, they were fitted for destruction. They, hey, if the Lord wanted to kill us off, we had deserved it. The wages of sin is death. We cut up right out the gate. But look what he did. He long suffered with them. Now imagine if the Lord handled that situation the way we handle it when folks cross us. Moses would came down the mountain, it would have been blank. He would, hey, wouldn't even told Moses. Man, I'm, I'm sick of him. He's gone. Just blank. Because that's how we operate. When we want something to be over, when we want something to be through, when we can't take it no more, enough is enough. Ain't no swaying you back from that. Ain't no words of God going to comfort you or bring you back to where you need to be when your mind go there. Let us know something, brothers and sisters. We really got to change the mindset. Because if the Lord treated us like how we treat each other, no flesh would be saved. That's real talk. Where we at, bro? 23. Go ahead. And that he might make known the riches of his glory on the vessels of mercy. Yes, sir. Which he had, I thought, prepared unto glory. Right. And that's what we were, vessels of mercy. Hey, the Lord say on so many occasions, hey, the certain things he didn't do, he didn't do to us just for his name's sake. Hey, we had already polluted his name. We had already, hey, didn't walk in his ordinances. Hey, but there was certain things he just didn't do just because it was covenants made. Hey, just because his people were promised something from the forefathers. And just because of that, he spared us. We lose sight of that so many times. God spare us on so many occasions where we know we wrong, but we'll jump somebody quick when they wrong. Don't cut them no mercy, no slack, no nutty. But you want God to give you all yours. Something ain't right with that. Something ain't right with that. Let's go to Matthew 18. Praise the Lord, he ain't us. <laughs> Matthew 18, we're going to pick it up at verse 23. Matthew 18, we're going to pick it up at verse 23. When you get there, my brother, go right ahead. Therefore is the kingdom of heaven likened unto a certain king, which will take account of his servants. Uh-huh. Well, I like the Lord's parables. Go ahead, brother. And when he had begun to reckon, one was brought unto him which owed him 10,000 talents. Uh-huh, so he reckoning now. He collecting at this point. Go ahead. 
But for as much as he had not to pay, his Lord commanded him to be sold and his wife and children and all that he had in payment to be made. So in a nutshell, this servant didn't pay his debt. So when it was time for him to collect, hey, he had to be in prison for this because he didn't pay what he owed. Go ahead. The servant therefore fell down and worshiped him saying, Lord, have patience with me. And I will pay thee all. Uh-huh. And this servant do what a lot of times what we do when we fall up short. Lord, have some mercy on me. Have some patience on me. We go to the Lord, we tell the Lord we're trying. We tell the Lord we're trying to give our all, give us strength. Work with me. And a lot of times you say that after you've messed up or when you know you've messed up. Have patience on me. Don't kill me. You be feeling death on you sometimes. Don't kill me, Lord. Have patience on me. And what do you do? Keep reading. 27. Then the Lord of that servant was moved with compassion uh -huh. and loosed him. You and know what, brother and sister? We lose. These are parables, but these really happen in our lives. I want you to know that. Hey, the Lord ain't punished us the way we deserve. And a lot of us know it. Hey, a lot of us even feel like, ooh, I feel like I done got away with some stuff. The brother laughs like, it must be true. Sometimes you be like, ooh, the Lord finna tear me up. I made it through the day. Praise the Lord. Because he has some mercy on you. In the case, hey, you might have humbled yourself and prayed. He might have loosed you from it. You don't know. But at whatever it is, he gave you some mercy for your wrong to him. For your wrong to him. Go ahead, bro. 27. Then the Lord of that servant was moved with compassion and loosed him and forgave him the debt. Uh-huh. Now that's us. Now keep reading. Can we do this too? 28. But the same servant went out and found one of his fellow servants, uh -huh. which owed him an hundred pence. Uh-huh. Now, the, the, this same servant that wronged his Lord found somebody that wronged him. Go ahead. And he laid hands on him. <laughs> on sight. That's a saying they say in Memphis that I love it. When I, hey, tell old boy when I see him, on it's, sight. It's on like, sight. Whoa. <laughs> on sight. <laughs> Hey, so when this fellow servant saw his fellow servant, it was on sight. Was on sight. Go ahead. He laid hands on him. Uh-huh. And took him by the throat, saying, pay me that thou owest. And see, this is the thing. Hey, you don't want God to treat you a certain way, but you lose sight that you got to operate the same way. We do this. Israel, we do this. Quick. Don't let no money be involved in the equation now. Boy, I done cut up sideways with folks. Oh, I don't give nothing about no Sabbath. You owe me this. <laughs> I done been that one. <laughs> hey, I ain't trying to hear it. <laughs> you didn't cross me. Mom, you playing with my money, boy. We cut up with about some money, don't we? I know I ain't the only one. <laughs> I know I ain't the only one, but go ahead, bro. 29. And his fellow servant fell down at his feet and besought him, saying, Have patience with me. And I will pay thee all. Hey, he came at him the same way he came at his Lord. Go ahead. And he would not. But went and cast him into prison till he should pay the debt. He wasn't trying to hear it. He didn't have no more control, no more nothing. Uh-uh, I won't mind. Uh-uh. Put him in prison. Skip down to 33, brother, and what does it read? Shouldest not thou also have had compassion on thy fellow uh, servant? Uh-huh. Even as I had pity on thee? Now, this is what the Lord is saying to that same servant to do this. Pay attention, because this is what we do. Go ahead. And his Lord was wroth and delivered him to the torment. Now, do this happen? This some, these are parables, but these are learning lessons right here, brothers and sisters. The Lord then forgave you for something have some mercy on you, and then you flip it and don't show no mercy? Now it said that Lord was wroth. He hot now. Go ahead, bro. And delivered him unto the tormentors. Uh-huh. Till he should pay all that was due unto him. Yes, sir. 35. So likewise shall my heavenly Father do also unto you. He said, so likewise, this gonna happen to you too. Go ahead. If ye from your hearts Forgive not everyone his brother their trespasses. Hey, and that's why it's so important, brothers, to have some self-control, some forbearance on yourself. Because you will lose sight of what God doing for you compared to what you need to do. 
hey, certain, certain things come up, certain obstacles, certain situations, money, whatever. Hey, you lose sight of what you begging the Lord for. Lord, give me some money to pay these bills. Lord, bless me with this, bless me with that. And then he do that for you. Then somebody asks you the same thing. I don't care nothing about your phone bill. You owe me them $50. You to just flip it on yourself. And we do this. This brother says, why it's so important? Hey, you got to walk a certain type of way as a servant of God at all times. You got to remember these laws. You got to remember these statutes. Because if you don't, you're going to go back to what you used to. You're going to go back to your former man. Well, let's keep going, bro. Where are we at? Let's go to Romans 15. We can't always have in these two different sides to ourselves, brothers and sisters. Romans 15, we're going to pick it up at verse 1. Romans 15, we're going to pick it up at verse 1. And when you get there, my brother, go right ahead. We then that are strong ought to bear the infirmities of the weak, and not to please ourselves. And not to please ourselves. Put that definition back up for me, Hammer. It said, we then are strong out of bear the infirmities of the weak. So this letting you know something. You're going to be around some people that's going to be weaker than you. And you got to have some patience with them folks. You got to have some self-control. Hey, we get tired of people too quick, too soon. Too quick, too soon sometimes. You got to have some restraint from that. And the thing is, it keeps talking about weak. Weak. Who are the weak? Because the weak ain't the wicked. I'm going to say that right now. The weak ain't the wicked. Sometimes I hear that come up so many times. Brother sinning and all that. Well, you know, brother, you know, you're strong. You got a very different. No, he wicked. That ain't what that's talking about. Bag that up for me, brother, and read verse four, chapter 14. Pick it up at verse 1. Let's, before we go any further, let's find out what it means when it's talking about the strong got to bear the infirmities of the weak. Because that ain't always what we think it is. We talking about the weak in the faith. We talking about all people serving the same God, but everybody ain't on the same level. Romans 14 and 1, what does that read? Him that is weak in the faith, receive ye. Uh-huh. Him that is what? Weak in the faith. Weak in the faith. That's what this is talking about. Hey, some of us been in here 20, 30 years. Some of you just been in here two months. The 20, 30-year-old person is going to know more than the person been here for two months. But don't beat them up on what you know. Have some tolerance. Have some restraint. Have some patience with them. Keep reading that. But not to doubtful disputation. But not to doubtful disputation. Don't put them in a situation where they doubting if they right and wrong. And we're going to look at some examples of this. Keep reading. For one believeth that he may eat all things. Uh-huh. Another, who is weak, eateth herbs. Y'all catch that? Yeah. You got two people in class. Hey, one eating meat. Keep in mind, clean. They still keeping the law. Right. They are faith keepers. Clean meats. So one eating meat. One like, no, nah, I don't know. Hey, I heard chicken unclean, such and such, such and such. I ain't eating nothing. I'm just eating herbs. One ain't no different than the other one, brothers and sisters. Both of them doing this thing according to what does say the Lord. Keep reading. Three. Let not him that eateth despise him that eateth not. Did you catch that? Yes. That's the tolerance and the control you got to have. You're not supposed to, hey, brother, man, you know you can eat meat. You wrong. You add to and take it away. Now, the Lord put that meat on the table. You wrong. Go ahead. And let not him which eateth not judge him that eateth. Hey, and the vegan, don't check me for eating the chicken. I'm going to tear it up in front of you. <laughs> Eat your asparagus. <laughs> Get along. <laughs> Go ahead, brother. For God hath received him. For God hath received him. Both are received. Both keeping the law. Both ain't eating nothing unclean. Both are apparently in the faith. Both of them in class. This is the stuff we got to learn to tolerate and have patience with one another, brother. So the key reading, brother. Four. No, verse five. Five. One man esteemeth one day yes, above sir. another. Yes, sir. I got to deal with this one. Go ahead. Another esteemeth every day alike. Uh, I'm going to give you out a perfect example of this. Keep reading it. 
Let every man be fully persuaded in his own mind. Let's talk about Mother's Day, shall we? I want to put this right on the table because this is a prime example of this. You got one that says, hey, man, I'm going to honor mother and father on Mother's Day. You got another one, I don't know, bro, that came from Gentile such and such, such and such. I ain't going to do it because the Lord said don't have no gods before me. Which one right and which one wrong? Both of them are. What that next verse say, brother? Six. He that regarded the day, regarded it unto the Lord. He that regarded the day, regarded it to the Lord. That's why I want to use this example. Hey, brother, I'm doing Mother's Day because the Lord say honor mother and father. He that regarded that day, regarded it to the Lord. Keep reading. And he that regardeth not the day. And he that regardeth not the day. Hey, brother, I read something and I think it's such and such, such and such. And the Lord say not to do that. Keep reading. To the Lord, he doth not To the Lord, it. he don't do it. Both of them doing this thing with a mind to please That's God. Right. Yeah. This is what y'all lose sight of when this keep coming up every year. Yeah. And one got to tolerate the other one. One got to have patience with the other one till we all come to this thing together. Keep in mind, because we lose sight of this, because we be trying to win souls and teach people, but you lose sight of the fact God gives the increase. That's right. So if you behind me, the Lord going to get you where you need to be if you keep doing what you need to do. That's what we always lose sight of, looking crazy at folks. You keep it Mother's Day, brother. Huh? Well, brother, I'm just honoring Mother's Father. Well, you wrong. No, ye ain't. And the one that don't want to do it and say, man, I just going to love my mama every day. You right, too. And that's the thing. That's why I say forbearing one another in love. Have some control. Have some patience. Have some restraint sometimes to understand where a person. Man, this brother trying to find the Lord. 